beliefs that in today's debate, social media is something that's becoming more and more popular in the status quo, and that more and more people are relying on it, and that more and more people are already using it for many purposes, to you know, contact it with friends, and even to this debate, reading news and knowing, uh, getting, getting information from social media. We believe that in this case, but when people are starting to become more reliable on these social medias, we argue it affects and harms the credibility of news supporters, and we think it is very harmful. But before we move on to the substantives, let's first define a few terms. So the first term is in the area of reliance. We believe that reliance is when these people in the society actually depend on social media in order to get the news they want and you know the daily news they read. Right? We, think that we think that these. Uh, News on social medias are usually uh, written by bloggers, and we argue this is going to be harmful. I will tell you why later. But secondly, it's on the uh, idea of news from social media. We believe that news from social media are news that are solely started. <coughs> sit down. They are news that are solely started from social media in the first place, and are always written or usually written by bloggers. We argue that these bloggers have no official establishment within the uh, legal uh, within the state itself. We don't think. We are pissed it down. There, with, with this, right, it does not apply to uh, things like BBC and CNN because we think that these uh, news agencies have a legal establishment with the state in the first place. And furthermore, we also think that the, uh, news agencies like BBC and CNN, they usually only appear on newspapers and TV programs and has only recently gone into social media in the end of the day. And we argue it's not like how these bloggers um, blogger news on social media. And thirdly, it's an idea of news reporting. We believe that news reporting in this case is the concept of uh, news reporting, where we argue that it should, there, be, should, there should be credibility, reliability, and accountability within news reporting. And we argue that in the end of the day, most news in the first place are not 100% reliable, and we think this is the case. The problem in today's debate is firstly, we argue that when people rely more and more on social media and take news from it, then it hinders news reporting, and secondly, it also affects their credibility. And let's move on to my first substantive on why is uh, news reporting credibility very important. So the first level is on the idea of the importance of the credibility itself. Still, a lot of people in the status quo already watch, uh, already watch, already read news from these uh, places, where we argue in this case, these people base their lives on news in the first place. Because the nature of people is that when they uh, watch and read these news, they want credible and they want reliable news in the first place. And because we think that in this case, people don't want news you know, from random people, from social media, and in this case, there are the bloggers. Right? And we argue in this case, when people base their lives on on social uh, information, physical. Yeah, when people base their lives on news in the first place, we are that it is very harmful when these people get wrong information because they usually make choices in their daily life based on these news. Here, an example, you know, when you see accidents or situations within a certain country, people there react according to what they see to the news and base their lifestyle on that, right? And therefore, we argue that when these people get the wrong information or get information that is incorrect from these bloggers on social media, we think it is very harmful as well. Lastly, we also think that furthermore, the credibility is also what reflects on the identity of these media in the first place. I don't think it affects their, fi uh, their finance and their identity of media. And we argue that when people lose trust in these media, we argue it's very harmful as well. And before I move on, I'll take any PIs. Okay. Now, moving on to my second substantive, right, on the idea of why more and more people will start relying on social media in the first place. So the first level, we have to look at the idea of the nature of these bloggers. Right? Because we think that these bloggers have a different way of competing in the um, social media sphere uh, differently from uh, news agencies like BBC and CNN in the first place. Because firstly, let's look at how they actually compete uh, within speed in the first place. So that these bloggers usually compete with who is able to put out news the fastest. Right? But these bloggers, the moment they see a situation in the real world, they usually try to put it out immediately for people to see. So the reason they do this is because they believe that if they put it out immediately, once people see it first, they'll be able to earn more profit. Because we argue the way these bloggers earn their profit is when if more people see it, we argue they get more money. Right? So they have the incentive to put it out to put it out as fast as possible. Because the harm here is that firstly, we think the real situation in the society is always changing. We don't think that 
news uh, we can stay fixed. You know, things like terrorist situations or things like you know accidents can go for a long time, and we argue it's not always fixed. So then, uh, once a news is released uh, very quickly, we argue it might not contain all the details or the exact information it is required to have, and it might have uh, you know misunderstandings in it and misinformation in it, and this is the harmful. Um, section of it. But furthermore, we also think that de uh, these bloggers have the nature of putting things that are most compelling and the most interesting to read. Because in the end of the day, they have to compete with other people in order so that they most people will read their own blogs in the first place. So therefore, we argue that when they try to put out things that are most compelling, uh, most interesting, they over-exaggerate certain things, and they argue in this case, people easily trust what they write in the first place. Because we argue that in this case, it is very harmful when people easily trust what they say without actually rationally thinking or discussing about whether what they release is actually true or not. But then, unlike uh, news agencies or BBC and CNN, where these uh, news agencies actually actually um, wait for the true facts to come out before they release it out to the uh, media, uh, people in the end of the day, because we think that is their job in a society and before we move Yes. Don't you believe that people are able to distinct? when seeing the news that they get from the blog and the news that they get from BBC or CNN. Okay, now within the first place, we already argued that these uh, new bloggers, right, what they do is they have to release everything as fast as possible. But there is the reason why these people will most likely see uh, these news first. I'll be telling you why, my later, in my second level, uh, why this uh, will cause people to only uh, watch these news from social media and not go to CNN anymore. So then firstly, right, we think that the argument here is that people have the tendency to read only one news. Why? Because we think when people start reading news or blogs from social media, they feel like they're already informed. Right? Because we think that when people read news, okay, they read it and they know what has happened, and then we think that they don't have the incentive to go on other multiple channels and start reading the same exact news again, because they think they already know about it. Therefore, we argue that in this case, people won't go to other places you know, to read the same news, because simply because it's bad that they could just be lazy, or that they know that it's going to be the same thing in other news anyways. So then in this case, they don't have the incentive to go and research you know, multiple channels to check whether you know this news is actually correct or not. And therefore, we argue that in this case, it is going to be very harmful. And this is going to be especially harmful when these bloggers release it on the platform of social media. Why? Because we argue that information on social media spreads very, very fast, and it's faster than how BBC and CNN you know, gives live support on TV programs and on newspapers, stuff like that. Because we argue that in social media, millions and millions of people use it every day. You know, every day there's people on Facebook, and they always uh, you know, know what's going on there, and we think this is the harm. My last substantive is on how it damages the credibility of the media. Because if then when more and more people start relying on social media, the identity of these videos start to look bad as well. Because we did it in this case, news reporting should be about reliability and credibility. But then when these bloggers come in, you know, and start blogging out false information, we will get that in the end, right? It's not reliable and it's not credible. And the thing that the image of the media is destroyed, and we argue this is how they harm uh, credibility of social media, and this is why I'm very proud to propose. That speech now I call upon Clara to open the debate for the opposition team this round. Today, Team Opposition stands so proud to oppose today's motion. And why do we do this? Well, because we believe that this will not actually lead to actual decreased credibility within the actual news reporting of what we are arguing about today. So today, we bring you three arguments. One, how this constant flow of information you get is actually making news reporting more credible. Two, how this competition makes more credible journalism, and three, my second speaker, will come up here and talk to you about the journalism in which, we're, in which we write these articles. So before I actually get into my arguments, let's do a bit of rebuttaling and level picking. So firstly, um, we did not at any point hear a definition as to who the news reporting was. So for the sake of this debate, we argue that news reporting is the entire industry of news reporting, meaning that when we... 
When we challenge the credibility, this means how you review every single news you receive from the outside world. So for example, he gave you this idea that the only people who have their articles on social media are bloggers, and how this is the only thing we're debating today. Two responses. One, we think that this is an unfair definition of this debate, because we don't think that bloggers are the only people who post on social media. Two, we say that the most common frequent articles on social media are in fact uh, when CNN go on there, when CNN posts all their articles, when the Washington Post posts all, all their articles, because we're saying that these are the actual journalism articles, the actual journalists who are proposing these articles. We're saying that is what we're debating today. We're debating whether this harms the credibility of, big, uh, of the overall news of reporting industries, and also we're debating these big news uh, news information sources such as CNN, such as the uh, debating. So we say that since they have set up an unfair debate for us to debate today, we, uh, because these are not the most frequent writers on social media, we are going to be debating on the standard. This too counts for, uh, counts for people uh, for big newspapers. So, okay, so what we really heard is that people want credible and reliable news. Uh, so that people get this wrong information for bloggers. It's because bloggers only care about speed. But this was an entire case. We give you three responses. We say that one, especially on social media, these bloggers are publicly ridiculed when they write something that is false. We said that when you go in and quickly write, oh my god, this thing happened and that is untrue, we said that you get a huge variety of comments from people, a huge variety of shares saying, oh, this is not exactly true. We're saying that this is so much worse oh, from outside the social media, where at max we'll get a few like less is like I didn't really agree with you. We are saying that, um, that there's going to be a big incentive to not write false things when you be publicly ridiculed. I'm going to further get into this in my arguments. No, thank you. So, two, we also give you the response that people actually think rationally. If this is if these bloggers write something that is completely false because they're so based in time, we do argue that people will be able to think critically and say, you know what, I don't really agree with the fact that um, this, and then they're going to think, and if this sounds so out of range, then they're going to, and we're saying that they're actually going to go forward and research with it. Uh, so if it's so like speedy and so it's so outrageous news, just click these, then we say that people are going to think, hmm, I don't really agree with that, and yeah. maybe I should consider more, no, thank you, I'll go research. So the third response is that we've never really gotten the mechanism as to how this so when harms the overall credibility of this news because of, of, of this news reporting industry because we say that only this really harms the credibility of one blogger. We're saying that one blogger doesn't represent the entire news reporting industry, and since that is what we have modeled this debate today, since we didn't get that from them, we stand by our work. So since I'm now taking thoroughly down everything of it, what we've heard from the first proposition speaker today, I'm going to get into my arguments. So first. How this constant source of information actually affects us into getting more credible news. So we're saying that how it used to be was that you'd only really have, you know, that one newspaper that you read from. Now why is this true? Well we're saying like firstly one newspaper was kind of expensive, you wouldn't have more. We're saying that two, your identity was also placed in the newspaper. In Denmark we have a very left-wing and a very right-wing newspaper. Essentially we say that in the past people who are very left-wing would then also go for the left-wing newspaper because this would represent their identity. So it's, um, so that is why people would ultimately only get this one sort of information. Now, why is this harmful? Well, we're telling you that this new this newspaper will then only would then only have the incentive to report to the people that it was giving them to. Since the left wing newspaper knew that oh, all my readers are very left wing, they was going to stick to the bias of being very left wing. We're saying that this, this actually harms the credibility of the newspaper because we're saying that there's many people in between. We're saying that there's going to be people there who would think, you know what, I'm not getting the entire story. Now, why is this harmful? We're saying this is harmful to the industry when these people don't think they get the entire story and then do not trust the industry just this or all sorts of information, since this is where they get their information from. Now, why are we changing our point of our emotion? Well, we're saying that when, you, when we introduce you to a constant flow of information, then you're going to get your information for so many, from so many other places. What does it ultimately lead to? Well, we say that people will then start to think rationally, and think, oh, you know what, this is being reported here is actually true. This is what's being reported here is also true. I'm going to trust this more. No, thank you, because this is no longer, I'm going to trust the overall news reporting industry more, because it's, I know it's no longer so heavily biased. No. Um, and because it's no longer so heavily biased, we think that ultimately we uh, give you better quality, uh, credibility on our side of the house. And if they have to argue against this credibility, then they have to give you the mechanism that we still have not seen from them. So, moving on to my second argument, which is how we're, uh, how we're actually creating more credible newspapers through having more competition. 
So we're saying that essentially we live in a very supply demand kind of place. Uh, uh, Area of place. We're saying that when there is the no local newspaper or the very uh, local newspaper, and people will see, want to have more news, then we are going to see that through having more, uh, a greater variety of news. We're saying that the social media provides a huge platform for the supply demand. We heard from the team proposition today that people want to read these credible news. We're saying that yes, thank Christ they will, and now will they get access to these credible news through the social media? The social media, because through the social media, you do get the chance to compare these different articles, meaning that ultimately you will be sort of having the article, no thank you, that you think is more true. So, um, no, that you believe is more true. Ultimately, we think that this leads to a better uh, credibility to the entire industry, because now you believe that you're getting the right sort of information. Before I continue, I will take a POI if you have any. We feel that these individuals, when they automatically read one news, right, usually what they believe is that, oh, they already one news, and that therefore they're already informed, therefore we, they won't find any other news. Okay, no, 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 we're saying that people aren't like so blinded by this one news. They will look at it and they will realize, oh, you know what, this might be biased, this newspaper might be biased. That's why we're saying that having a wide range of new information constantly given to you, presenting with a different version of biases, as we do see happening on the social media, you're ultimately going to have uh, to change that belief. So also we give you this entire idea of public ridicule. We're saying that ultimately we are forcing newspapers to be less biased when putting them on social media platforms. That means that now they are not only anymore having very left wing readers or having very right wing readers. No, now we're saying that they will be exposed to all of them. Now what does this mean? This means that if they want to continue to be in the first, if they want to continue to have this great amount of readers, and since people want to read the most real news, these will be forced to change their uh, bias. Which means, well now we're actually going to have a less biased newspapers, because ultimately, whichever uh, the most right form of information, the truest form of information, will have the most readers. So we're saying that on that on so many levels we're not forcing them to deliver the better kind of information because if they do not do this, then they will be publicly ridiculed, as we see happening on the social media. So because we have ultimately said, proven to you today, how we lead to a more credible industry, because we are now giving you so many sources of information, which means you ultimately will have to trust the entire news reporting industry more as a whole, we beg you to oppose with this today. Okay, so now I call upon the second speaker from the proposition team. social media are news that actually stems from bloggers. <coughs> Why? It's because of the fact that these other news agencies such as BBC and CNN have already legal establishments. The reason why there's a distinct distinction between the two is the very fact that these CNN and BBC didn't start from social media. They started with a, with a legal establishment. They just moved into social media. <coughs> news from social media means bloggers that actually went from social media because they had no other platform to actually argue their own reasoning. Therefore, we see that there is a distinction and we think it's a fair debate. But even if it is not a fair debate, we will prove to you why we still win this debate. Before I move on on how this did actually damage the credibility of news reporting, a few rebuttals to make. First rebuttal, they talk about how people are rational enough to be able to distinguish between actual news and news from social media. One, we think regardless of the fact whether people are able to rationalize the news or not, it still damages the credibility of news reporting. Though so my first, uh, first speaker already proved to you that, that the reason and the purpose of news reporting is to be able to provide credible information, is to provide unbiased information. We think that when these bloggers come up here and actually come in and talk about how they have this one-sided opinion about extremist opinions, we think that this already damages the credibility of news reporting. But two, we think that a lot of people that rely on news from social media don't want to go on news on BBC. They do it just for the purpose of feeling like they're informed. We think that these people that actually go on social media is because they're too lazy to actually go on any other websites. So we think that these news agencies that come and actually 
start from social media has to be credible right from the get-go. We don't think that these, these bloggers are actually giving these people what they need in order to balance it out. But this is on the second uh, uh, rebuttal when they start talking about how bloggers are not the only news from social media. One, we already told you how news from social media is different because these news are not made from legal establishment, how they extend it into social media. Therefore, there's a clear distinction between the two and how social media, or how bloggers actually started from social media. So we think that, that, and therefore it's a fair debate, but even if it's unfair, we still win because of the fact that these type of news are not credible. These type of news that actually go onto social media are usually biased news, regardless of where they're from. We think that this actually Actually destroys the credibility of news reporting because news reporting is meant to inform somebody about what's happening it's not to give them biased opinions so we think under this case we still win because of the fact that these news reporting are still destroying their credibility but this is on the third rebuttal where then she talks about how bloggers are going to be ridiculed so it's okay one, we think that bloggers will not be ridiculed because of the fact that they, this is the way they perceive the information. We think that this type of situation is when you actually have a problem. Because nobody wants to ridicule the bloggers, one, because it's new information, so they don't know how to access, uh, uh, access it yet. But two, we think that under our case, when these bloggers actually perceive their information, it is their point of view. So people can't say that what you're thinking is wrong. But more importantly, if people start believing that these bloggers are actually saying the right thing. You cause more harm to what's happening right now in social media. You cause more harm in what you're doing to um, your news reporting. But let's look on the last case, on my last rebuttal, when they start talking about how you will have, all of a sudden, under our side, you will have biased news and how you only have news reports that actually focus on one group of people. One, we think that this is exactly what bloggers are doing. Bloggers are actually trying to get money. How? We think that bloggers get money on the very basis of competition, who can get the news fastest, but two, they're also talking about the wow factor, about who can actually lure more people in to read their news. We think this is very problematic, because if people and bloggers actually go on social media just to actually influence people to come read their sites, we think that one, these news will not be credible, two, these news will most likely be biased and very extreme. So we don't want these people to even begin reading these types of information because if these people will actually want um, to actually make sure that, these, that we're, make, we're giving these people the right form of information. Yes. How does people reading blogs lead to news stations such as BBC decreasing their credibility? This is your burden. Please tell us. Our burden is to prove to you how it damages the credibility of news reporting. News reporting, my first speaker has already told you, is about how you provide credible information. But even if we want to argue on that ground, I will show to you right now how it actually damages news agencies. So let's look at my argument on how does it damages the credibility of news reporting of news agencies. Let's look on the purpose, the very purpose of news agencies. We look at how news agencies are meant to provide credible information, reliable news, to inform people with actual facts and to create awareness. We think right now in society, the reason why uh, news from social media doesn't do this, but actually hinders this process, is because of the fact that these type of bloggers are actually, um, they're not actually, act they're not actual facts. They're what people perceive of the facts. We think that when this type of situation happens, these news agencies aren't able to fully get across what they've been trying to get across because it's other people trying to interpret the news. We think that news agencies won't be able to actually get more people to come in to watch their news because people that rely on social media, there is a reason why people rely on social media. And if people weren't relying on social media, trust me, they would have gone straight to BBC News. No, they decided to go to social media because of the fact that they want to be informed, they want to feel like they've been educated and they know what's going around the world. We think that under this scenario, we have to make sure that these people are getting biased information right from the get-go. But more importantly, we think that news from social media actually removes the purpose of a uh, news agency. These people that read and rely on the news of social media, it doesn't allow for these news agents, 
agencies to actually reach its full potential. Why? Because of the fact that the nature of these people actually reading the news is to um, actually make sure that they feel informed. But especially in social media, when these news from bloggers become viral, we think that people from social media would trust the news that was actually written on these social media. We think when these type of news actually goes viral, more and more people that go on social media just to read news will not be able to be educated about what's actually happening around the world. We think that more importantly, when these bloggers actually set up their own views of what is happening, we think that there's no other counter narrative set where there'll be an echo chamber of narrative of extreme views within their own sites, where nobody will question it because of the fact that it is their own blogger's point of view. So because of the fact that news reporting is about credible information, about how if you actually allow for these different types of people to actually enter the realm of news from social media, there is a reason why they're going to social media and not going to actual news. We have to cast a clear distinction between these two different groups of people. And more importantly, even if these people were good to go to social media and actually to go to these news agencies afterwards, we still say that it damages the credibility of news reporting because of the fact that they aren't providing enough credible information for people to make that own judgment in their head. We think that under this scenario, this actually damages a lot more than side opposition realizes. So because I've proven to you that it damages not only uh, news reporting, but it also damages the credibility of it and also news agency, I am proud to propose. Uh, thank you, Sandra. That's right? Yes. Okay. So now I call upon the second speaker from the opposition side in this debate, Andreas, to deliver his speech. It's early in a debate for quarterfinals to already make a contradiction, yet proposition has achieved to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, on one hand, they portray people as someone who wants only credible information and credible news, which was basically the first sentence in their first speech. But secondly, they're talking about their only want to read biased blockers, right? We say that their perception of the human being has suddenly changed. Do they on one hand want credible information, or do they on the other hand only want biased information from bloggers, right? We, need, we think they need to take a stance. Now ladies and gentlemen, in today's debate, they think that they only have to defend, um, defend bloggers, right? They think that they're made this distinction that these, uh, so these CNN and these news already were not started as social media, but they started before that. We say that essentially doesn't really matter for the debate. All they have to prove, and all we have to prove, is whether or not that news from like from uh, social media is going to lead to less or more credibility within news reporting. It doesn't matter whether or not CNN was already like fake beforehand, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, now that I've uh, now that I've proven to you like what this debate is really about, let's we go into some rebuttal and reconstruction before we go into our third and final point. So, let's go into some rebuttal. Now, the first uh, argument was what this. Firstly, we want credible uh, news, right? Already explained to you why that's a huge contradiction. Secondly, they're talking about why bloggers are not credible, right? Clara already told you that it's only going to harm the individual blogger, right? But furthermore, they've responded to that, oh no, it's going to uh, harm the overall credibility. But here's the thing, firstly, like the blogger, they haven't really shown why like the blogger in the first place, why the problem is inherent to social media. We think without the social media, the credibility of uh, news reporting, even if we concede to their points, is still going to be less credible without social media, right? They haven't explained to us why it's inherent to social media. But secondly, we talk to us if they really want credible information, which they talked to us in the first speech about, why are they even going to like, read these bloggers' um, uh, blogs in the first place? We don't even think that's uh, what like, the world is like. 
But furthermore, they talked about if bloggers just want to try to get money. We don't essentially think that's proving anything. So they came up with this second point about the nature of bloggers, right? Firstly, they talked about how like you're putting out, like you have to put out information the fastest, right? So you don't get the key details. But here's the thing. We don't really think that the perception of reality and how social media works is, re is real, right? Because firstly, how it works when I go on Facebook and a CNN posts something, they don't necessarily post like, oh my god, this person died. They put a link to an article on their website. Why? Because they have an incentive to get people on their website because they earn money from that. That means we're essentially helping people to get those actual information as they're talking about in the first place because they're linking, the, uh, linking to the real articles on their website. So if we didn't have social medias, right, what's going to happen? Yes, if we even can see to the point about people are being lazy, we'd say that they won't really go from one website to another, saying that they won't read all the articles. What does social media do? It means that you have like several aspects of like the political spectrum, right? Linking to different articles because of the incentive to ha they have. That means that we're actually helping them reading the articles that, that they want them to read in the first place without social media. So on our hearts, we're proving to you why they read more like real information, right? But thirdly, we say if people are so lazy, right, they won't even read the like real analysis in the first place, right? So we don't even think that's going to change under their house, right? Furthermore, they told us then that like then we told us like we have the incentive to give out right information because in social media you're going to be ridiculed from CNN or even the blockers if you post fake information. They have two responses. Firstly, they told us that they don't know how to access information. Now listen gentlemen, I think this is a narrow conception of the individual human being. We don't think the individual human being is stupid. We think that the individual human being actually knows something about the world and can criticize different uh, statements that the bloggers and the newspapers like are posting on, on social media. But secondly, they told us that, oh no, I don't want to hurt the blogger, I don't want to hurt like uh, the social media, I don't want to hurt like CNN or something. We basically don't think that's true, right? We think that we have a capacity to actually criticize when we see something that's not in co correlation with reality. So if you go on social media, just look at just one post from like a newspaper from a blogger, there's criticism, right? Just look at one. It's not, this is essentially not true. Furthermore, they gave us this last point about like how you're not feeling fully informed, right? We have like two responses. Firstly, I've already explained to you why they're now going to read even more and get more information because they're now like going to be linked to the article on their website. So it's not only the individual um, website that's going to be linked to, but it's different aspects of that certain um, certain uh, uh, thing, right? So secondly, we think. Uh, so secondly, we think that this leads actually to more credibility of um, of the. Um, whole news reporting in the first place. Why? Because it's going to open up for the individual from different aspects of the news reporting, right? Saying that if we actually don't have a biased news reporting only, which is what you would do with like, uh, like only having a newspaper, but it's much easier and there's easier access to different aspects, right? So Sorry. I think that's going, no thank you. So we think that's going to like increase the credibility. But furthermore, I'll give you another line of analysis as to why it's going to do so. Let's look at this. With it's easier to access criticism of a, of a statement when you are in social media. I already explained to you why. Without social media, you can also only read the like, uh, criticism in the newspapers when people are sending letters in. But ladies and gentlemen, we don't think it's the same. It's not as easy as reading the criticism in the newspaper because the newspaper is not hosting it in the first place. So we see that social media, you're going to like criticize um, uh, the news newspapers, right, online. What does this do? It increases the credibility of the news reporting as a whole because now they have an incentive to post non-biased, um, non-biased, biased uh, um, statements, right? What did we tell you? We tell you exactly this point that you're going to get different aspects, right? They essentially never contested with that idea. But secondly, we're talking about like the competition that you're going to be public ridicule, right? I said you already dealt with that. So ladies and gentlemen, let's go into the third and final part, part and talk about journalists, right? So let's look at this. And the status quo, these journalists already have an incentive to do well, post like, post like a thorough analysis of stuff. Why? We don't think this is necessarily monetary reward. We think it's because they have an ideal they want to carry out in the world. Not necessarily like a political one, because we already think that's, we already prevent like the biased ones. 
thus increasing the credibility. But we think that they have like an uh, aspiration within the ideals they have as a journalist feeling their responsibility. Now, under like our model with social media, we don't necessarily think that's going to change. We actually think it's going to increase on the other hand, because now they can access more people in the first place. Saying that now I actually matter even more, because now more people will get linked to my articles. Saying we're actually increasing their incentive to make non-biased uh, stuff, right? So ladies and gentlemen, what has this debate been about? The burden for today on both sides was whether or not it, it was going to like make the news reporting more credible or not. Now they haven't really fully like explained to us why bloggers like are going to suddenly uh, going to like make it less credible. But we have given you thorough analysis on our side. Please deal with that in your third um, uh, third speech. Thank you so much.
to concede to the fact that when you get to the 21st century, there's an increased amount of uses of social media, right? And there's a lot of people who rather use social media than go on news websites in the first place. And therefore, we think in this situation, it's more likely that there's an increased amount of people who start using social media and rely on news from social media, even though it's not actually not, not that credible in the first place. But now let me move on to the third idea under whether or not people are actually rational. We, they talk about how people don't want biased news. Um, yeah. Okay, but there's still a missing link between how bloggers harm the entire credibility of the entire news reporting industry. That was the model. What did you have to say to that? Look, we told you that we're supposed to prove to you how it damages the concept of news reporting. Right? We're not saying that it's going to damage another news no. agency, but even if we are to concede that we have to prove that it's going to damage another news agency, we already proved to you in the second speaker how it reduces the amount of people who use this type of um, credible news agency, and that's why it damages the idea of news report itself, because now people are being informed of the wrong thing. People are not being informed of things from the credible news source in the first place. So now let me move on with my class on the idea of how they talk about how people don't want biased news, right? That's not exactly true in the first place. A lot of times people read up news just, uh, just for them to confirm their own bias in the first place, right? We don't think that people read it for like, you know, normal news. And we never told you at the end of the day that people don't want to read biased news. But secondly, we think that um, um, they talk about the idea of this constant flow of news, how people are going to constantly see things on the internet that are different and they're just going to start reading different articles, right? We told you the nature of these individuals who already choose to go on social media for this news is that when they pass it, um, uh, that, um, that certain type of news and they read it, they already think they're already being informed, right? So we don't think that there's any necessity for them to feel like they're going to read another article because they want another alternative point of view. But the fact that they already think they're informed means that they're probably not going to be going on to another um, um, set of news even though there's a constant flow of news. But but secondly, we think they neglect um, the understanding of how in Facebook works in the first place, right? Once you go into Facebook, we think that we, when you see that type of news blog itself, it doesn't give you an, another link about the same news blog to another person, given the fact that that individual themselves who wrote the news blog doesn't necessarily want them uh, their money to go to another person. But in fact, they want people to read more of their news, right? Therefore, they're going to post more of those in, um, the news that they wrote themselves, but that might not necessarily be on the same topic and might not necessarily be a counter balance, right? So let me move on next to the idea of the blogger's reliability. They firstly talk about the idea of how bloggers are going to feel ashamed if they're going to be ridiculed, and that's why they're going to be accountable for themselves. Firstly, we don't think there's any check and balance system within the um, bloggers themselves, right? Because it's different from news agencies where there's editors and there's um, you're actually accountable under the government itself to say that the government, uh, uh, that um, to say things that are actually informative to the people, to things that provide an educated view to the people in the first place. And therefore, firstly, we don't think that there's necessarily going, to, um, um, we don't think it's necessarily true on how they talk about the idea of how bloggers will actually not want to be ridiculed by these people in the first place. But secondly, we think that if, even if bloggers are being ridiculed by people, right, we don't think there's any incentives of change, right? Because on the first place, if only one person has, has identified that their fact is wrong, they can still spread news and other means. And usually because people are being influenced by the compelling factor and the fast factor of that news, that's why they want to um, get joined into this news in the first place. Which leads me clearly to my next point on how we talked about the idea of how bloggers cannot uh, compete, cannot afford to compete on credibility, right? Because given the fact that they don't have a whole firm itself to help you write c um, credible news sources. And that's why we think that they have to move and shift towards using things such as um, fastness as a, a rely, relying source, and secondly, uh, using the wow factor as um, for people to be able to uh, be attracted to this type of news, right? And they talk about how um, they want people, um, they said exactly that they said they want people to go on their own websites, right? And that's exactly why we think these bloggers are actually going to uh, um, attract people to their own website and not to another person's website that would ha which has another alternative an alternative view, right? And we think that if they want, uh, and if they want the money, especially. That's probably why they don't want people to go access another news source and disprove them in the first place, right? And that's why we don't think that there's necessarily going to be any link with the blogger itself saying that, oh, you should also go read this because of the fact that they want money, they are profit-oriented, and they want the fame of the individual, right? On well, the third and last idea of the idea of how they talk about, uh, we, we said that bloggers identify themselves as news reporters, right? We think most of the time bloggers will tell the people, oh, we are the news reporters, we actually have a different alternative, we just not come from a company, right? And most most of the time, people on social media will probably be like believe it in the first sight because of the fact that they see the word news report itself, right? We think most of the time, even if you actually conceptually think that no, that's probably 
pointing out the reason why, right? But a lot of times people actually do this, and we have to concede to the fact that it happens, and most of the time people will be believe these type of blogs because of the fact that they report from um, credible news sources, even if they actually, they actually don't do anything about using any credible news sources, right? And therefore, because we've already told you that bloggers make, um, um, actually make less credible news, that's why we're very proud to propose. Speaker from the opposition team, Alberta, to deliver her speech. Mr. Speaker, Team Proposition's burden today was to prove to us how this, how their model will lead, or how uh, social media specifically leads to news reports being less credible. They failed to prove their burden today, and that's why they essentially have uh, also failed um, today's debate and why we've taken um, this one. So before getting into my three clashes, I'm just going to deal with some few problems that we've seen in the, in the debate. So, Firstly, about the news that we're actually talking about um, in in this debate. So, firstly, they say that that they're defining the news that we're talking about as only like blogger news, and that this is fair because the, the news that you get from the media is only news that you get from bloggers. Essentially, they say that this is not true. You can also get news from, for, for instance, CNN or BBC or. Um, uh, the Economist that also posts a lot of articles on Facebook, on the social media. We say that, they, that you also have a lot of access to these kind of news through social media, so we don't believe that it's fair and that it makes sense to only talk about the blogger information that you get from these websites. Um, secondly, we say that, that even, if, like, even if people get a lot of, if it was only blogger news that were existing on the social media, people will still be, would still be interested in looking up news at like C CBB or CNN if they really wanted to be, if they really wanted to be like um, enlightened and if they really wanted a, like the, tr the full story of something, they would know, most people would know that they would have to go to CNN, they would have to go to BBC because they knew, as they've stated themselves, these are the established news stations, these are the news stations that can actually provide them with like um, proved news and like decent news, so if they wanted the full, full story, if they wanted um, to be enlightened, then they would go to these, these um, news stations no matter what, that's what we say on our side of the house. Secondly, um, about how people are too lazy to look at after like real, um, real news under, uh, like under, um, under the status quo. So essentially we say that this is not the case, as I've already explained, people will want to go look up, look up news and like in most cases they will still want to look at CNN, look at BBC, they don't all, only read their news from, um, from Facebook or Twitter. We say that it can actually be beneficial because the ones who were actually too lazy, as they say, no thank you, under their model, uh, the ones that actually were too lazy to look up CNN or BBC, they will now get some sort of information, whereas on the other hand they have no information at all, meaning that under their model, under their world, what they're trying to prove is that, like, uh, improving the overall, um, improving the over overall, like, perception of news or the overall, like, um, concept of news 
uh, and the information within society, that still increases under our world because like, it, when they go to the social media, they get more information, also the ones who are lazy. So moving into the first point of clash, about, uh, essentially like the only clash that we've really seen in this very messy debate, essentially, like how will the credibility of news stations be decreased, which was also like the answer of the motion. It's not just to say that this is their burden to prove. It's their burden to prove that these uh, news, that the credibility will be decreased. What they have told us today is that firstly, they can't, um, like the, firstly, the uh, news stations as CBBC or CNN cannot compete with the blogs. First, we say that we, they have actually proven to be really good at competing with these blogs because now, they have no thank you because they also have adapted to the social media because they are also posting posting things on the social media and meaning that they are competing with them at this very moment so they can not compete. Secondly, they said that like everyone believes in the blogs and everyone is like uh, attracted to the blogs because they are trying to make it more interest interesting. We say that firstly, CB BBC and CNN are also trying to attract customers because they are like a corporate branch that knows how to get customers. So for that reason, they're also like attracting people to go and read their articles. Secondly, we say that most people will still want to read C BBC and CNN. Of course, there are like some people who are a bit more lazy and don't want to do that and only read, yeah. the, read the, the blog. Well, thank you. But like most people in the, the main um, part of the population will want to go to uh, BBC and CNN because they know that these are like the established no. news stations. No, thank you. That has like the decent news. That has um, like the credible news. So for that reason, we don't believe that their point is down. We don't believe that they provided us to you and to us any specific mechanisms, any specific, um, like, um, any specific ne mechanism as to Man. how, no thank you, people reading blogs, as to how uh, news being uh, perceived from the social media leads to the news from the BBC, CNN, Times, whatever, being less credible, being Man. less, no thank you, being less credible and being less, um, like, uh, being having a low, lower quality, they have never provided to you this mechanism, um, and we believe that on our side of the house, on the other hand, we have provided to you several mechanisms as to why this is not the case. Ma'am. Yeah, but before I continue, yes, please. If CNN and BBC, as you characterize, are trying to find ways to attract customers, therefore you move the, them away from their initial pur initial purpose to inform these individuals. Yes, I understand. So we say that the, the C BBC and CNN have two purposes. Of course, they have the purpose of like the first and foremost, most important purpose of like um, of of uh, bringing out news to the population, of like uh, informing the population about what's what's going on in the world. But of course, they also they, they are a corporate branch that want to attract customers. But we say that. For these, for BBC and CNN, the news will mo in most cases also be, be, the mo be the most important thing. And as we have explained to you thoroughly in our arguments, they still have an interest, a corporate uh, interest, to keep up their credibility, to keep up their quality. And for that reason, we don't believe that point stands. So, to what we brought to you to prove why the why the um, credibility will not be decreased. Um, even if they have to be like corporate, even if they have to like compete with these uh, blocks or these news that are going on in the social media. So the first point that Clara brought to you was about like how you start being exposed to more news um, under uh, under with so with having social medias. How you start being exposed to more of these things. So because we have like this constant flow of news, and because we are always exposed to news when we open up our news feed on Facebook, we have like several different articles from several different newspapers. We have like so many different um, so many many different inputs and so many different uh, articles that we, we can read from so many different newspapers it's reflecting so many different opinions. And because of this, because the newspapers are, are losing like their original range of customers that believed in everything they said because these customers are all are constantly exposed to different kinds of newspapers, these newspapers will now have to be more broad yeah. to include, no thank you, more people, to include more, uh, more opinions, to include like a different range of opinions. And because of that, they will have to be less biased and for that reason more credible. That was our first point. Secondly, we brought to you the mechanism about the co how competition leads to them also having to increase their quality. Because the competition is high, higher, the news agencies will have to increase their quality because that is how they get customers. As they conceded to, uh, apparently, like in most cases, um, the readers want quality, they want, uh, and for that reason, they will have to increase it. 
Lastly, we, took, we brought to you the point about how, um, like peop how these newspapers are on social media, media being publicly ri ridiculed. Because they're being pu publicly ridiculed on the social media, because it's easier to say, um, to write a comment on it, uh, to write a comment on Facebook saying this was wrong, this is not like this is not factually true, than it is to write a letter to the newspaper saying this is um, factually true. So we say that because of that, they will be more publicly ridiculed, and they will have a larger interest in, in doing fact checks because they have like this, um, because they don't have an interest in being publicly ridiculed because this is bad for their image. Their response to this was that bloggers like don't want to be publicly ridiculed and, like because readers agree with them. So essentially, we say that if these bloggers write to like uh, write untrue things as they try to prove to us that they are, if they write like untrue stuff, then people um, on social media they call them on on that on that too. So we don't believe that that rebuttal really stands. For all these reasons, I beg you to vote. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Now I call upon the last speaker from the opposition team, this way, Andreas, to the, the reply speech for your team. Okay. only to talk about blockers. But listen, gentlemen, even though we think they have to talk about well-established news reporting agencies, we will also talk about blockers because essentially we think that will be more fair. We hope the proposition agrees that you have to deal with both. So what I'm going to do in my reply, I'm going to do that same exact thing. Firstly, I'm going to look at blockers and secondly, well-established news reporters. Let's go into what was brought forth in the point of blockers. Firstly, the talk to us about blockers will decrease the credibility of news report agencies. We told you, one, that the blockers is an individual's perception of other news in the first place. That, doesn't, that means that the individual who are seeing these bloggers isn't going there for the objective news in itself, but is going there for the individual's perception of the news, right? We don't think this is going to lead in a decrease in a, a the credibility of the news in the first place, because the, the link between the news and the individual's perception, the bloggers' perception of the news, is cut, right? We've told you that throughout the benches. But secondly, we told you that they haven't shown us how this is inherent to social media. Because without social media, the bloggers are still going to be there, right? They haven't gave us the link yet. Thirdly, we tell you that even if it was inherent to social media, right? We think that is, there is no net loss. What do we mean by, by this? We told you that they told you that there are two types of people. Firstly, those who want credible information and those who don't. So let's imagine that the bloggers suddenly are all over the social media in the first place, right? Those who want credible information aren't going to the bloggers' uh, sites in the first place. Those who don't, they are going to the bloggers' sites. It doesn't mean that those who have want to be like credible information suddenly are being turned around and going to the bloggers' sites, right? Because they told us that there are two types of people. So we're saying that even if it's on social media, there's no net loss of people who want credible information to them who suddenly don't want credible information. So ladies and gentlemen, regarding bloggers, we have told you throughout our speeches that one, there's no link between the, new, the less credibility of news reporting in the first place, but secondly, that we think that actually um, there's going to be no net loss. Now this debate was really about the well-established news report, report agencies, so let's talk about that. They told us that people want to be fully informed, so they only read like some, some of the details, but not all. Firstly, we don't really think that there's no link between wanting to be fully informed and only reading a little bit. 
Because we see on social media that the, these news report agencies keep posting new information about this specific case, right? That means that you can never be fully informed, right? But according to them, if you want to be fully informed, you're going to read all of those. So even according to their logic, right? On through the on social media, they will read even more, right? But secondly, we're talking about it's not only going to be details. I explained to you in my speech that, we, that there's links to those websites, links to CNN's websites, which has thorough analysis. This, right? They never actually dealt with that. But thirdly, we told you that even if we concede, uh, see to the fact that like it's only on social media, they, so that one of the most important in today's debate under well-established uh, news reports. Firstly, we told you it's going to be less biased because they're going to be ridiculed on online, right? We told you uh, that it's going to increase the credibility because nobody wants necessarily to be that biased. We recognize there's still biased news reporting agencies, but we think we're decreasing the tendency thus increasing the credibility. Secondly, we told you that you are being exposed on social media to a lot of different aspects. That means that, that, means that you're going to like increase the credibility of news reporting because you're not only getting one aspect, but a lot. So what did that tell you? They told you people are lazy and won't read the details. We think that's only comparative, or is better, because without social media, if they are so lazy, they aren't going to all the different websites in the first place. Thank you so much. social 
media. The people that want to actually get quality news would have gone straight to the news uh, agent, uh, news uh, website. So that's not a problem. The problem is those people that are too lazy and they only want, they only do it just to feel informed, to feel educated. These are the people who are trying to address. These are the people that actually goes on social media, and we see that it damages the credibility of news uh, reporting because of the fact that these people are getting false information. They're getting biased information and not credible information. We talk, we talk about uh, then the next issue on how does this damage the credibility of news reporting. The opposition whip came up here and talked about how companies are corporal agencies and how they're going to try and actually uh, get more people to come in. We think that this damages the credibility of news reporting because news agencies don't focus on the very principle they set out to be. News agencies was created to give out factual information and to actually make sure they inform the people under the government. They didn't go there to actually make money. So we think that these actually uh, causes a problem because it damages the credibility of news reporting. But more importantly, they talk about how the companies are able to manipulate social media. We think that one, they must be on a very different social media site because of the fact that when you go on Facebook, you have different links to different forums and different types of news. You don't get all of the same news on the same page. We think that under our site, you actually don't get a lot of people actually going through different links because these links are to different news. So we don't see why was there a confusion in the beginning. But more importantly, we talk about how bloggers aren't going to be affected by uh, criticism because of the fact that these are uh, that that. Uh, we don't actually uh, criticize the bloggers to begin with. And so, because of the fact that it damages the credibility of news reporting, I am proud to propose.